All right, good evening. I'll call to order this October 9th, 2018 meeting of the Powhatan County School Board. Ms. Wilson, if you'll let the minutes reflect that all school board members are present this evening, along with our student liaison and Dr. Jones. Uh, if you'll rise, we'll be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by Ms. Ayers and by the invocation by Mr. Kunkel. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lord, we ask that you be with us today as we conduct publicly the business of Powhatan County Schools. Please guide us in our deliberations so that we may make the best decisions in the interest of the students, the staff, the parents, and citizens of Powhatan County. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Text to item D, approval of the agenda. Are there any changes necessary to the draft agenda presented for the evening? I make a motion we accept the agenda as is. Motion to approve the draft agenda is presented. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor of approving the draft agenda, please respond with aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Takes us to the approval of the minutes. Any discussion regarding the minutes as presented? Mr. Chairman, I had a, a correction on the September 25th meeting, page seven. It should read Mrs. Email under the closed session. Okay. <clears throat> All right, any other changes necessary? All right, so I'll make a motion then to accept the minutes with that one correction, please. All right, so we have a motion to approve the minutes with the one correction. Bottom of page seven, first paragraph under closed session, change Mr. to Miss. Have a motion, is there a second? Second. Mrs. would be good. Mrs. I apologize. Thank you. Motion and a second. All in favor, please respond aye. with aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5 0. The minutes are approved, or the change to the 25th minutes are approved. All right, do we have a motion to approve the minutes of September 11th and September 25th? Oh, I'm sorry, I meant to. If I misstated your motion, I oh. apologize. I thought we amended the September 25th minutes, and now we're approving the minutes of September 11th and 25th. Oh, Which okay. one did we well, do there, Ms. Wilson? I was, the, yeah, yeah, all right. that's what, Is that thank how you. everybody else interpreted it? Yeah. All right, well, I have no problem with either of those two minutes. So, all right, review of bill and receipts. Any questions, comments regarding the bills and receipts as presented on the agenda? All right, no approvals required for the bills and receipts. Takes us to the public <coughs> comment period. Uh, this is the first of two public comment periods for the evening. This is an opportunity for individuals in the audience wishing to speak to the board, address the board regarding items of concern please come forward. There is a time limit of three minutes per individual and five minutes per group with a 30 minute total time limit. We would ask that any speaker address your comments to the board as a whole, not to individual board members. And we would ask that you identify yourself by name and please provide us with your address. Public comment period is open. Again, public comment period is open. All right, seeing no movement, I'll bring public comment period to a close. Takes us to our first presentation of the evening, Dr. Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, pres or the presentation that we have for you this evening is a final accreditation report. Um, back at the end of August, on August 28th, we provided you with a, a update on preliminary accreditation ratings. Uh, the state re released the final accreditation ratings um, the last weekend in, or the last week in September. Uh, so we'd like to give you an overview now with some more specific information as well as a look at the new school quality profiles which will uh, that have been posted on the DOE's website. Uh, Dr. Amahundro is here to uh, lead this presentation. Dr. Amahundro. Great. Thank you all. So again, this evening we'll 
be presenting the uh, final accreditation report. As we uh, mentioned in August, all of our schools are accredited under both uh, the old and the new system. And we do have on the DOE website, there are school quality profiles. Those were introduced about a year and a half ago um, where they redesigned how information was presented. Uh, it used to be called a school report card and they released these new school quality profiles and now these have been updated to reflect the new accreditation standards. If you will remember from Okay, thank you. Um, if you'll recall, the, on the next slide, we've got the school quality indicators. Um, they are different for elementary, middle, and high school, but there are just a variety of indicators that are used to measure different components of the school to provide the accreditation standards. Uh, they are measured on three different levels, and those are reflected in green, yellow, and red, and there are different um, numeric assignments for each of the accreditation indicators. So we've released, they've released uh, each of the school's accreditations and Flat Rock is fully accredited or just accredited, the term actual fully is, has been removed from the accreditation standards, so they are accredited. Um, we are also under a waiver through the end of this year um, and that, that will complete at the end of the 2018-19 school year. And they were uh, received a score of level one in all of the indicators. The next school is Pocahontas Elementary. Um, Pocahontas has level one in all of the indicators. You'll see a level two in mathematics, um, and that was due to uh, the scores for black students who received scores at a 68% rather than a 70%, and that's in that achievement gap group that you'll see in the center column. The next school is Powhatan Elementary. All three um, areas, academic achievement, ac achievement gaps, and student engagement, they scored in the level one area. Powhatan Middle School, this actually looks a little different than what you would see on the, um, the DOE website. Um, the DOE website uh, gave us an accreditation based on grades seven and eight only because of the way that the middle school was configured in the previous years. This data reflects scores from all three grade levels, which puts them at level two in their achievement gap areas. And we have identified, as we mentioned in the August 28th presentation, the areas of the gap groups uh, that were having some of the lower scores and that, that was presented. It's also on the right-hand side of the slide in English and math. There are focus areas for black students, economically disadvantaged students, Hispanic students, and students with disabilities. At the high school level, they received a red level three for achievement gap, and that was based on scores for students with disabilities in math, as well as economically disadvantaged students. Um, that one, uh, we also do have focus areas though. We are level two in English for students with disabilities and that will be a focus area for our group. What we'll do with this information? Um, first of all, I, I mentioned those areas of focus and it's largely in some of our gap group areas, but we have compiled a variety of strategies and supports so that we can make sure that we are providing the best instruction and the ability for all of our students to succeed. So at the middle and the high school level, they have met to do resource mapping and create action plans for the students with the administration, with the lead teachers in the areas of English and math, as well as incorporating the use of the math and English specialists. At reading and at elementary and middle school, rather, they've got reading tutoring that's going on before and after school. We're using that, um, some funding through PCG and Title IV to complete that activity. As you know, we mentioned in the last presentation that we added an additional math coach at the elementary level and we've got a math interventionist at the middle school. We're doing some progress monitoring in a different way at the secondary level. You've heard in the past about some of the data meetings that we've done at the elementary schools for a long time and they are um, implementing something similar to that at the middle and high school level. Also, we're using a strategy um, through a program called SIM that's a writing intervention to help with center, sentence writing at the middle school. One of the areas that we saw was a, a, an area of need was the eighth grade writing test, and this intervention should help us provide support for students in that area. 
Also, we've redesigned the Equity and Diversity Committee, and some of that information was rolled out through committee membership as well as at our convocation yesterday. Uh, one of the, the positive steps as part of this accreditation program has been that they um, value students' growth, and so that will help us as we work with students that we're uh, identifying students who we can um, show, have them show growth in some of these testing areas. And then, of course, we've got our new strategic plan that addresses some of these needs. Mr. Chairman, if I could. Dr. Jones. Thank you. Um, I, th I think it's also important to, um, and, and Dr. Amahundra mentioned this in the presentation, uh, for many, many years now we've used the term fully accredited or not accredited, um, and every communication that comes out from the state and from the governor now talks about this new system being a flashlight and not a hammer, how it's supposed to shine a light on areas that um, where growth is needed or where improvement is needed. Uh, in Powhatan, we've been talking about um, some of these areas for four or five years. We talked about some concerns with the performance of our special education students and how we need to improve upon that. Same for some of our other reporting categories. So we continue to work on this. It's been a focus for the last couple of years, and we will continue to work on this. Um, but the, the language has now changed. It's accredited. It's accredited with conditions. Um, and there are benefits for students who make growth and schools that show decreases in uh, percentage of students failing. So we anticipate growth this year. Um, as with all new systems that come on board, there are some challenges, there are some benefits, and there's a learning curve to them. Um, and I think all of us are learning this new system and how we uh, will adapt to it. Um, there are some additional requirements that, uh, that we will achieve and, and meet. Um, but it is new for us, and um, in many ways, our demographics in this new system can make it even a little more difficult than under the previous system. Uh, when you're dealing with small groups of students, uh, each student is magnified in terms of their performance. So uh, that's a message that we're sending our teachers and, and one that we will continue to work on. I just wanted to share that information. All right, thank you for the comments. Questions or comments from the board for either Dr. Almohandro or Dr. Jones? Ms. Ayers. <clears throat> On slide number eight, which is the Powhatan High School, I thought that I heard you say, and I know that it's noted with the English, that it was a level two. It's marked as a level one, but it has a, you know, a comment on the side, the English. Is it a level one or a level two? So it is a level one, and the achievement gap um, reporting category for the indicators actually is a compilation of several subcategories. So that achievement gap in English is an achievement gap for all of the uh, reporting groups. So it would be Hispanic students with disabilities, um, English language learners, economically disadvantaged students. And if you have two or more yellows, level twos, in any of those categories, or one or more reds in those categories, then you would drop a level. We only had one yellow. So it is an area that we need to monitor, but the way it shows up in the overall rating, it's still a green. So okay. we're, but it doesn't, just because it's overall a green, we've identified, we still want to make sure that we're improving in those, um, in those reporting categories. So that's why it's an area of focus. Okay, and that was a student with a disability, or students with uh, disabilities. That, that was the yellow. That was students that was with disabilities, yes. Okay. okay, yes. All right, thank you. All right, other questions or comments? I Ms. had some, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. um, so um, kind of the same kind of question on slide five for uh, Pocahontas Elementary. Okay, so the math, it just said students with disabilities. Is right. that correct? Yes. But then what was the 68% for black? So that was English students. That was in, for English. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then um, it just, uh, oh, on slide nine where it says P, uh, next steps. What is um, PCG funding? Uh, it's a, a group that we contract with for some of our special education services, IEP online, which is our online system, but it also allows us to provide interventions at the middle school. So it's a funding source that we have that we're using through our, through, through our budget. Oh, okay. Right. It's not a... 
we don't receive funds from PCG. We're paying PCG mm -hmm. contracted services to provide us with tutors, tutors. to come okay. in and work with I students. I asking that. Okay, so it's you. a vendor then? It's a vendor, it's right? Vendor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So um, it seems that math is a problem. Um, I, I'm glad to see the resource mapping and the action planning. Have we, because um, by the time they get to high school, I mean, you know, it didn't happen then. It happened as they're going through. So. Um, do the teachers, the math teachers, get to talk with one another between, um, you know, elementary to uh, middle and middle to high school to kind of help that? Is that part of your plan? So or could we, it be part of your plan? We do have, as you know, a math specialist, and mm -hmm. she coordinates all of those kinds of activities. So we have math coaches that are available at the elementary level, but then those coaches will meet with the middle school interventionist um, so that they're having those communications and then they disseminate the information to the teachers. Okay, so that we could kind of try to do it ahead of time kind yes. of thing. So we're not spending so much money, um, you know, making up with all the tutoring. If we can address it. If Dr. Thomas was here, she would tell you that it's important for us to focus on the core. And as long as we're focusing on the core, that we're going to make sure that our students are where they need to be. And so that is what our focus is, is to make sure that the core instruction is there first. And then for students who need additional assistance, we provide the inter interventions. So it's not the intervention. When you say intervention, then, it's not going back. It's, it's this, that particular year. Correct. Uh, but it, Go ahead. But an intervention could be, if it's a sixth grader, they may need additional support in a fifth grade skill. So that could Why be, that could happen. Grade. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Other questions or comments? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cole. Yes, sir. So sure. my question was similar to Ms. Emol's in, in early intervention. So these, these focus groups, or not focus group, but the groups that, that we have are being identified early on and they've been given extra help early on from what I'm understanding you to say. Yes, so at the elementary, it starts at the elementary level and the teachers as well as administrators meet regularly and they identify students who have deficiencies in a skill or need extra support. So they're receiving regular instruction and they might receive inter intervention during their IE time at the elementary level. And then as those students progress to the middle school level, they're doing similar kind of monitoring meetings for students. And if they identify students who need extra assistance, then they're provided that as well at the middle school. And then that's being applied at the high school as well. So yes. And hopefully as we go through the process, we're closing those uh, gaps and those deficiencies earlier so that we won't see it so much at the secondary level. And, and truly what the elementary teachers are doing has been fantastic in that area and we anticipate that we'll continue to see improvement as they reach the secondary level because of the work that the elementary teachers have been doing. Great, great. Now, and, I, and I know we've done some stuff with preschool and that's a piece of that and, I, and, I, and I, that's great. Um, for the achievement gaps, it might be helpful somewhere just to list where those achievement gaps, you know, what the groups are that you're looking at, mm -hmm. just, you know, and to kind of define what that is, because if I'm a, I'm a lay person looking at this, I'm not 100% sure what that means, so that might be something we want, might want to add to this. Uh, and I'm noticing up on page, uh, page three, is, is social studies not included any longer? Is, 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 so we're just giving up on <laughs> I, mean, I know our country doesn't need it, but, uh, but none, so it's not included in the accreditation model anymore, is that correct? As a social studies teacher, <laughs> I'm sorry to say that it is not part of the accreditation process. But it is, there, there are some exciting things that are going on with social studies that I think will, from an instructional standpoint, will better serve our students. So there is a movement that we will be giving students assessments using performance-based assessments. Um, that really allow students to show what they know in a way that's relevant for them. Um, and I think that we're moving in the right direction with that. So they are still tested in social studies Good. and they are assessed. And so we, there is a standard for assessment, but there's not a reporting category from an accreditation standpoint. Yeah, I, I'm glad to hear that. And I hope that we expand that into the 11th grade, I mean, into the government class too because that seems to have been an area that, that kind of gotten left out over the, over the, with the previous accreditation model. We didn't test seniors on government, we tested on U.S. history, which is great, but I, 
but I often wondered whether we got as much out of our seniors as we could have and as we should have because there wasn't any high state testing tied to that. So, so I'm glad to hear that we are doing something. And, and, and uh, like I say, I hope it'll, that will also include our U.S. government classes in our 12th grade. And uh, if, if I may, in the new assessment map that we've created for, um, for secondary, that those performance-based assessments, even though they're not required um, beyond 11th grade, they are part of the government program. Great, great. Thank you. And, it's, and, and, by, and just to comment, it's, it's a good report. You know, we've, we've known about the subgroups, and, and they're going to continue to be a challenge for everybody. It's not just us. And, and you know, I just want to make sure as a board member that we're doing all we can, and we're continuing to look for new ways to do that, and I'm confident we are. But I ask the question because I think that's what the public would want to know. So, so thank you for your response. All right, other questions or comments? All right, well, I have one, and... and I'm saddened by the social studies discussion. <laughs> but if I could just comment or question about page nine, I was reading the strategies and I, and I think they seem to, seem to be very good ways of approaching some of the areas of focus. Can you, can you just tell me in summary so I can better understand, for example, writing intervention for, for proficiency and sentence writing at middle school, in a summary, what does that actually look like in a classroom with a student? What, what, How's that going to be done? Sure. So that would be something where if we say we had a collaborative English 7 class, we would have a group of students who were pre-tested to see where they were in writing and what their proficiency was in writing. And if they were identified as someone who needed extra assistance in that area, then they would receive targeted practice in that area. And so what it would be is very simple ways of addressing subject and verb agreement, making sure that they understand what the composition of a sentence looks like, but it's a targeted research-based program um, through a program called SIM that we're going to use for it. Um, we've got several of our teachers who've been trained in that program, and then they will be supporting the application of that program. Okay. And that would be done during class time, but also potentially during tribe time? Correct. And we're, we are able to do that with, with our resources that we have to, available to us yes. today. Yes. Okay. Unless you want to give us more money. <laughs> but yes. All right. Any other questions or comments? This is a good report. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, Dr. Alondra. All right, Dr. Jones, I believe we have a recognition this evening. Yes, yeah, so we're going to stay up here, but um, we wanted to recognize the school board members. The VSBA's um, awards were uh, awarded to each of the board members um, who qualified for the different levels. So you have your awards and your pins um, at your seat. So congratulations and thank you for your service and for the work you've done uh, with um, your professional development to continue to learn and be better board members. So. Um, that is your recognition for today. We're going to have a lot of recognitions next month as we uh, have um, more students who've done competitions at the beginning of the year and those types of things. I think we have some FFA students we'll be recognizing next month. Right, Jordan? Yes, sir. Yes. Good. All right. Well, congratulations to each of the board members and thank you for your service to the citizens of the county. Uh, that takes us to the consent agenda. Dr. Jones, would you like to walk us through this? Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, first, we have uh, principal reports. This is uh, the first month of the year that uh, principal reports have been done, so those have been included for um, all five schools. Uh, monthly financial reports. Uh, the CF CIP financial report is included. We've moved the facilities update since both projects are nearing completion to the consent agenda, so our plan is, if it pleases the board, to um, continue with the facilities update, to, but to put it as part of the consent agenda as opposed to a separate presentation item since we're not involved in a um, large project. But you have, if you have any questions, we're happy to answer those. Can I now or later? Um, now would be fine. Okay. I, well, what I was wondering is what was left in, for the um, new bus garage because I thought it was pretty much done. Yeah, there's just a couple checklist items that we have. We're um, finishing those up. Um, we like to go through a few months just to make sure that everything's working and checking out all the different systems with the seasons changing. You know, we want to make sure that the heating works because we haven't really used that yet, that type oh, of stuff. Okay. So um, that's why we haven't closed it out completely. But there is a oh. fund balance left in that account. Uh, we don't anticipate using much more of that, if any, mm -hmm. uh, but we want to just give it some more time to make sure everything works and that we've checked everything well 
um, as part of the closeout procedures. Okay. Thank you. And then on the middle school, we're still going through some punch list items, some furniture. The last of the furniture items have, uh, have arrived and or are being delivered in the next week or so. Um, the canopy at Pope Powhatan Elementary is nearing completion. The canopy itself is up. There's some site work and concrete work that still needs to be done. So um, in the near future, I was talking to Ms. Deal about this before the meeting, we're going to be communicating to Powhatan Elementary parents that the bus drop off will now be on the side of the school uh, using the same bus loop as the middle school and that front loop will now be parent pick up and drop off just like at the middle school so that will help traffic flow there um, and um, so hopefully by the end of October we'll be finished with that project and be able to transition to the new parent pick up drop off at Powhatan Elementary that's the major project that's uh, or the major work that's still left with the middle school project any other questions on facilities uh, Mr. In, in terms of the water tower, I guess we'll get reporting on that at some point about yeah. what damages or, whatever, or, or what fines were levied and how all that's going to get worked out. I'm Correct. I, we will get an, uh, since the county managed that, we'll get information from them and, and share that with the board uh, when we get that from them. Yeah. And, and I just wanted to uh, say thank you for what was done to the track at, at, at Pocahontas. It, it, it looks great. Mm -hmm. I, I've had a number of folks compliment us on that so I really am appreciative that that was rolled into that project good um, next item is the facility usage reports of how our facilities have been used so far the first month of school there are some donations um, to be made uh, that would have been made for your acceptance and then the personnel docket and addendum let's scroll down um, and those are the items on the consent agenda that we're asking for approval of today. All right, so we're looking for approval of consent agenda in the block. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, so is there a motion to approve the consent agenda in the block items A through G? So Amen. moved. Second. Motion and second. All in favor of approving the consent agenda, please respond with aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Dr. Jones. Yes, sir. The, um, in the superintendent's report, we're asking for approval of 2018-2019 school board advisory committee members. Those members, the new members that we're asking you to approve are in green tonight. Okay. Um, and the, most of the committees are filling out nicely. Um, and uh, we'll get the Title I. We'll have an update for you at our next meeting of Title I advisory committee members. All right. Very good. Do we have a motion? I'll make or a discussion. motion to approve the... Uh New advisory committee members. All right, motion. Do we have a second? Second. A motion is second to approve the new advisory committee members. All in favor, please respond with aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Dr. Jones. Thank you. Uh, next is revised VSBA school board policies. These are the policies you receive for information on September the 25th. Uh, these seven policies we're asking for approval at this time. You've had uh, the detailed explanation sheet as well as the policies themselves. Uh, we're happy to answer any questions that you have, but are asking for approval of these policies this evening. All right, do we have questions or comments regarding the policies? All right, I, I have, uh, I suppose, just one correction. I think that, and this is just a scrivener's error, but under policy BDD, mm -hmm. page two, paragraph B at the top of the page, I think we just we have the wrong word in there in the new language. I think we're looking for participation maybe and we've got participates or the other way around. Let's see. And it's the policy dealing with electronic participation in a meeting. Sorry, my computer is failing me. At this yeah, point. just I'm pulling it up now. All right, so under BDD if you would look to page two of that particular policy under B, and I think we're trying to say if participation by a school board member through electronic right. means, so if we could change that, and that's just a, probably yep. just a scrivener's error. Yep. And then the other question I had is under GCDA, GCDA, and this is the one dealing with employment, and it's talking about employment of an individual with a felony conviction and there's some a brand new paragraph that's added in there, uh, notwithstanding the requirements of, is the beginning of the new mm -hmm. paragraph. So is that language that was brought to us from the School Board Association, or is that 
to comply with changes to the Code of Virginia? Right. That's okay. changes to the law that have um, there have been some leniency there for okay. people who've had their rights restored. Okay. And that's track language provided to Correct. us? Okay. Yeah. Because there, there's some specific language in there about the pardon and various things. Right. Okay. Yep. All right. That's all the questions or comments that I had. Okay. Any other board members have questions or comments regarding the uh, policies? All right. Do we have a motion regarding the policies? Sure. I'll make a motion to approve the school board policies that we've got before us tonight. Uh, BDA, BDD, GCMA, GCCB, GCDA, IGE, and JGD, JGE. Right. And I'll second. Motion and a second. All in favor, please respond with aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Dr. Jones. Thank you. The next item is a request for so supplemental appropriation of state funds for fiscal year 2019. Um, in 2017, the, the board approved Powhatan to become part of a regional special education autism program uh, where we would be able to send uh, students that needed a more intense intervention. Uh, to other programs uh, in school divisions in our region instead of placing them in uh, placements in private services. Uh, and we would be receiving some state funds to help offset these costs and to save the county money. Well, we received that funding, um, and that is a funding of, well, we received $112,776 um, in June of 2018. Uh, and we'll receive the same amounts um, later this year. So because it's new money that we didn't account for as part of the budget, we need a supplemental appropriation of that funding uh, to be able to accept that and then use that within our special education department. So we're asking for approval of that at this time. I'm happy Dr. Uh, Mr. Johns is here. If you have questions from a financial standpoint and if you have questions about the program itself, uh, Dr. Prince can answer those questions. But. Uh, this is new funding from the state as a result of our participation in this program. We will need to go to the Board of Supervisors and, and ask them for appropriation of this money as well since it wasn't part of the original appropriation. But is it correct the money was provided to the county for this specific purpose? For this, it was earmarked specifically for this purpose um, and designated as such. Okay. So it's really just a formality. Right. All right, questions for Dr. Uh, Jones or Mr. Jones? Yeah. I do, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Emel. What are the, the tests, these tests that they are mentioned in, in the boilerplate that we, um, you have to pass? Is failure to pass means you don't get the money? And who has to pass these tests, the children or the teachers? What, what's that um, about? The, the school division has to pass the test. And what the maintenance of effort tests are, uh, and there are four tests, and basically, uh, they want you to spend at least uh, as much money as you did last year or more uh, on the special ed education program. And they will measure the total dollars uh, spent by the locality, total dollars spent by the state, uh, as well as uh, the amount of dollars spent for each on each child, the average amount. So as your child count goes up, which is what's happened to us over the past few years, uh, we are not passing the uh, amount spent per, the average amount spent per child. Uh, the, the FY17 test, we only passed the one test on the amount spent by locality. Uh, prior to that, we had passed the amount spent by the state and the locality, and the year before that, we passed all four. And so right now our child count, our special ed child count is increasing, makes it much more difficult for us to pass all four. But if we do not pass a test, uh, then what uh, may happen is that in accordance with IDEA, we would have to uh, send a portion of the federal dollars that we receive back to the federal government. And it wouldn't be all of the federal dollars. It would be, let's say you fell the test by $20,000, then that may be how much you have to spend back. There are some exceptions. And um, we did have to use uh, a couple of exceptions last year to pass the one test. As I look at it this, uh, as I look at how we closed out FY18, 
I think that will pass, but it's extremely close. And so um, those are the four tests. It's basically that you're spending as much money on special ed uh, this year as you did the prior year. Well then, is that like with the state? If the state decides that we're not getting as much funding, then how can that be our fault? If that's, do you, the, do you know what I'm saying? Is that what you're saying? So if uh, we didn't get enough money from the state one year, we don't pass the test because we didn't get enough well, from the previous year. You may, pass the previous you may year. not pass the state part of the test, but as long as you spent enough local dollars as you did the prior year. So it's just locally. Well, it's both. If you, if you, there's one test on local dollars. So as long as you spend as much or more local dollars as you spent local dollars last year, mm -hmm. you'll pass that test. And they also test you on state dollars. And so you can pass either of those tests in total. And then they also have the same test on the uh, average per child. So it's really just a con accounting procedure to ensure that we're spending the money that's been allocated for special education on special education services. Um, and the federal government has put in a requirement that you have to spend at least the same amount or more. So when we are being um, um, wise with our dollars and using them to provide as much services as we can, sometimes we can get penalized for that. Um, so we just need to be careful about how much we're spending and allocating for special ed uh, services. So this funding will actually help when it comes to maintenance of effort. Yes, it will. Right. Absolutely. Because it's different now. Because now it's additional money that we're now spending in the area of special education that we're getting from the state that will help us meet this the MOE To effort. pass the test. Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right. Other, Mr. Cole. If I'm reading this boilerplate piece correctly. We got $112,776 in June. Correct. And that was to offset last year's expenses. Yes. yes. So in addition to the $225,000 $225, plus dollars we're going to get this year, we, so we've gotten a total of two, we'll get by June of next year, we'll get $112,000 plus the two, $225,000. So, I notice in your motions you've got a, you know, a couple motions about the 225000 Do we have to make any motions at all about the $112,000 to go to the Board of Supervisors and say we want that put in our capital reserve fund? Um, no, sir. That's an automatic thing um, at this point in that as we end each year, any of our unspent dollars, okay. uh, when the audit is complete, uh, will roll to the CIP reserve. Okay, good. And so there's no action needed by this board to do that. It will occur automatically. Yeah, I think it's also important to point out to the board that we weren't notified that we were going to be receiving this money on June 30th. It just kind of came right. as a surprise to everybody that nice we surprise. were getting it's it. Good, so yeah, it's, it's better than the alternative that's of right. getting money taken away. But um, right. that's why it's automatically rolling into the capital. We didn't have time to allocate it or spend it to serve our students. It's, it's seldom good news, and this is and getting money from the federal government is 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 seldom happens, so this is obviously good news on two accounts. Yes. Yes. All right. Any other questions or comments? I have a, I was going to ask that question, Mr. Cole, so thank you. Um, the 225, that will automatically roll into the appropriate category since it will be part of our Yes, well, that's process. the second yeah. half of the, um, is to propose category <laughs> amendment to be adjusted or so we can adjust those and put the money where we need to to meet the needs of our special education students. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that all goes to the instruction category. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Further discussion or comments? Further questions? Oh, All right, I'm, the item does require a motion. Okay, I'll make a motion that we request the uh, supplemental appropriation of state funds for 2019 from the Board of Supervisors. Oh, okay. Okay, I recommend that the school board approve the request for supplemental appropriation of state funds for fiscal year 2019 
in the amount of $225,552, and that the school board approves the proposed category amendment and authorizes staff to forward this request to the Board of Supervisors for their consideration for approval and appropriation. All right, is there a second to Ms. Emil's motion? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please respond with aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank Dr. you. Dr. Jones. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Mr. Jones. Jones. Uh, yes, sir. Next item is consider approval of Virginia Tiered Systems of Support grants um, in the amount of $31,918.97. This will be used to provide professional development to our staff and purchase materials to support both our VTSS programs and our PBIS programs. All right. Do we have discussion? Questions? This is. Mr. Chairman, this is for the Ms. high school. Um, this is for, I believe we can use this for all of our programs, but we are expanding to the high school this year, PBIS, so that's where we may use most of the funds. Yeah, because I thought it said that you can't, um, you can't uh, use it for uh, programs that are already in place. Right, but we're expanding PBIS. Pro, I mean, even though they're in place, we're continuing to do new things, so some of the money could be oh, okay. spent on new programs right. or enhancements of our existing right. programs. Thank you for clarifying yep. that. All right. Further questions or comments? Was this a grant that was Ms. applied Ayers? for? Yes. By Ms. Wojcicki? Ms. Wojcicki. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I make a motion. We accept this grant for uh, v VTSS. All right, we have a motion to accept the Virginia Tiered Systems of Supports grant. Do we have a second? Second. Motion is second. All in favor, please respond with aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Dr. Jones. Thank you. The next item is to, um, we recommend the school board approve the annual interagency agreement with the Department for the Blind and the Vision Impaired. Um, this is an agreement that allows us to provide services to those students. Um, the original attachment, I think, had a, was scanned, um, didn't have some of the pages scanned properly. I think the new ad, uh, attachment has those pages, so I apologize for that if you were confused by 202 and 404 when 3 didn't copy, but the um, complete pro contract is now attached for your review, and we're asking for approval at this time. This is an um, agreement that we approve every year at this time. All right, do we have uh, questions or comments regarding the agreement? Mr. Chairman, this is a repeat agreement from year to year. I'm ready to make a motion to approve it unless anybody has any questions. All right, hearing none, Mr. Cole, would you like to proceed? I'll make that motion. We have a motion, is there a second? Second. Motion is second. All in favor, please respond with aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. The ne next item is uh, Recommend that the school board approve the recommended surrogate parent for the 2018-2019. Uh, parent is identified, uh, Ms. Lizette Oxley, a former public school teacher and a SEAC chairperson, has agreed to serve in this capacity. Uh, we're fortunate to have somebody with her uh, experience and expertise serving in this role. We're asking for approval uh, at this time. All right. Do we have a motion regarding the item? So moved. All right, we have motions. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please respond with aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Dr. Jones. Last item is to um, uh, recommend approval. The Powhatan Special Olympics has requested a school bus and school bus driver to transport Powhatan residents to the Special Olympics volleyball tournament in Virginia Beach on November 3rd and 4th. Uh, the policy EEAD is attached for your review. Uh, we're at recommending approval of this um, request, which uh, from time to time we've approved for the Special Olympics program. All right. Do we have a discussion regarding the request or questions? Make a motion that we approve. All right. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion is second. All in favor, please respond with aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. All right, that takes us through the superintendent's report, takes us to items for discussion. Comments by the board. Ms. Winner, we'll start with you if that's okay. All right, 
So, so far, so good. Everything at school, everything's going really smooth. I haven't seen anything that really stands out to me. Getting ready for homecoming week next week. So, it should be a fun kickoff to keep the school year going right. All right. Well, good job. So far, so good has a ring to it. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. We appreciate your engagement. Appreciate you being here this evening. Thank you very much. I know you're, you're busy with a few things at school, so thank you for your time. Just a little bit. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> All right. Mr. Kunkka. Uh, nothing really. I've heard nothing but positive uh, comments about the start of the school year, so you know, congratulations to everyone on the staff for uh, kicking things off smoothly. Enjoyed the opening of the uh, middle school and everybody's... Uh, fantastic things about the, the new school so I think we're off to a great start I'll just leave it at that very good thank you sir Mrs. Ayers uh, just a quick comment about the dedication of the new middle school that everybody was just thrilled with the building and the whole process it's just um, I've heard nothing but wonderful things from teachers and community members and students love the building so um, just very that's very positive for us and um, I look forward to us hosting the VSBA Regional Forum this year at that beautiful school so we can show it off. Uh, the other thing for Ms. Wilson is that I will, would like to attend the 2018 Annual Convention. I am the voting rep for this board at that, um, at that convention. Thank you. All right, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mrs. Emel. Um, I uh, want to say how much um, I've enjoyed the uh, change in the middle school's uh, back to school night. Uh, it was very interactive. They had us up and um, moving, uh, moving about. Uh, there was a scavenger hunt in one classroom. Um, uh, we learned the uh, alphabet in uh, French class, or, well, we were taught it. You know, we tried to learn it, I guess we should say. <laughs> um, just it, it, it was nice to the difference because usually um, they go over their syllabus which they've already passed out and you've already heard before so it was kind of nice to hear the activities and things that they um, are already engaged in um, and, and again the dedication in the open house it was a very nice program for the community um, the the performances were lovely uh, the the um, I want to say film the um, video. video thank you was was very very nice very from nice. the students um, they also had a Chromebook night last week and um, of course I attended that so I could learn and um, even though my daughter I, I guess they've had them now for three weeks and although she was involved in the piloting last year so I was just amazed at how quickly they're just learning that so um, that's for the middle school. Um, the high school, um, the back to school night. Um, next year, I know I'm wearing sneakers because there was a lot of up and down the stairs, one to the end of the building to the next. Uh, no, t you know, I couldn't do so much talking in between when you see parents because you need to be in the room at a certain time. And yeah, anyway, um, there was lots of encouragement from the teachers as well as the principal to let um, everyone know if you have questions. So it was very welcoming from a new parent uh, perspective. Um, and then the senior night, the MLK committee was very pleased to be included in the uh, high school Sunday night messenger and uh, for more exposure. Uh, they ran out of application forms. All 50 were given out that night. Wow. And um, so I'm sure we're going to have plenty of applicants this year. Uh, and then the back, to, oh, yesterday's convocation. That was top notch. Um, it was a perfect example, I think, of how to keep the attention of the students by making learning fun and interactive. Learning by example. Um, it was a wonderful way for our teachers to learn. I was laughing so much, my eyes were watering, um, and you know, who would have guessed that I should have worn waterproof mascara? It was just hilarious. And it was well done. So good job. Thank you. All right, thank you. Mr. Cole. Yes, sir. Just uh, uh, back in June, we approved a, a resolution to work with, uh, with Bell Mead. And you read in the paper this week that, that that's on hold, and we don't, nobody knows exactly where that's going. But I, I just wanted to mention that, that, that they're still hopeful, but there are a lot of new barriers to the, completing that deal. 
Um, just, I know we talked about doing a benefits discussion sometime coming up, and, and, and just, I just want to make sure yep. we've still got that on the agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are interviewing at Appomattox Regional Government School for a new director. Uh, there's initial interviews the next week, just so you know that that's a process that's going on at that governor school. Uh, and Ms. Wilson, I'd I too would like to go to the convention in November. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. All right, so uh, I just wanted to touch on a couple things. First, the dedication ceremony I thought was wonderfully done. Congratulations to you, Dr. Jones, and your staff. I have heard nothing but positive comments from the public. I've had a couple people talk to me specifically about how, how surprised, about how nice the, the building is, the structure, the layout, the educational environment, the surroundings, uh, the fields, all those things. They're very, very pleased. And I just think that's, that's a wonderful, wonderful bit of feedback to receive. The, the video PowerPoint from the students was very nicely done. And, and I know that you know, they, they enjoy doing that. That's a medium of communication that they're very comfortable with. If there's some way to share that in some fashion, I think that, that was nice. I liked the message the students had, thank you for my, for my new school. It was very simple and honestly, it was better than anything else that was said <laughs> that day. It, it's, it's a wonderful building, it's a wonderful environment. And I think the faculty seem to be doing a great job there with the administration and staff. Uh, the convocation ceremony, I just wanted to comment on that. For anyone that didn't get a chance to come to that event, that was probably the best party in Powhatan that morning <laughs> when I was there. The students, I'm sorry, the staff, the, the administration, the leadership, very engaged, care about what they do, had a great time doing it. And that's exactly the message that I think we want to convey back to the students is that education's fun and, and it ought to be. And it's something that stays with you for a lifetime. And I just thought the level of engagement from the staff and from the administration putting it together, it just was very, very nicely done. Wanted to commend you for that. And, and again, I think as Jordan said it, she said it very, very well. So far, so good. We're off to a good school year. Things are going well. And I want to thank again everybody for their role in getting us to this point. Let's keep working hard. And I think that things are going great. So, Dr. Jones? Yeah, I'll follow up on a convocation as well. I wanted to thank all the students. Um, Jordan was on a panel with seven or eight other students ranging in age from six to 17 or 18. Uh, that came and spoke about uh, what matters to them in their education and what qualities they look for in a teacher. We had second graders come and sing a welcoming song. We had uh, several of the band programs perform. In Spanish. Um, right. Yeah. The welcoming song was <laughs> yeah, in Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and we had the jazz band perform and the show choir perform. All of those students had a day off yesterday. Um, but instead of sleeping late, they came in and, and I think provided some great inspiration uh, to our staff and uh, entertainment. It was really well done. Um, I wanted to thank Dr. Amahundro who put convocation together with a lot of hard work from many other people on the division leadership team. But she kind of spearheaded that. I kind of gave her a charge that I wanted the best convocation ever and she rose to the challenge and accomplished it in my mind. So she did a great job. Thank you. And I know we've yeah, got- Very good, yeah. I agree. Nicely done. And I know we have some um, faculty members here from Pocahontas Elementary School, which went all out and ended up winning the spirit competition. So congratulations, Yay. Pocahontas Elementary, for a job well done. That was the case, right? That was the yeah, case. Very and the superheroes. Superheroes. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, so I, it was a really a great morning. It was followed up in the afternoon by uh, some more professional development, following up on uh, some of the outcomes of our strategic plan. So um, the teachers kind of got energized in the morning and then carried in that energy to some good learning in the afternoon. So it was a good day for them. I also wanted to share to the board that we uh, are scheduled to do a um, benefits budget workshop item next um, meeting on the 23rd of October. I'll send out a communication to staff tomorrow um, so that they're aware and invite them to come to that meeting so that uh, we can hear from them or the board can hear from them on uh, some priorities and goals for this year's budget. Uh, and we'll d uh, dedicate a good amount of time for a discussion of that and hear from the board as well about um, items that you want to prioritize in this budget. Um, and it'll help us to get that information early so that we can start looking at um, building that in when we get updated information in December from the governor's office. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. And if, if I could ask the indulgence of the board, I did neglect one item. I just wanted to notify the board that I will be out of town on business on October 23rd. 
Um, I, I hope to be able to participate electronically, although I cannot tell you for certain I can do that tonight, but I will notify Ms. Ayers and let her know if I'm able to do that. I hope to do that again, but again, I will not be physically present on the evening of the 23rd, and I'll be out of town on business. Thank you. All right, so that takes us to our public comment period. This is the second opportunity of the evening for individuals or delegations or individuals wishing to address the board to come forward and be heard. There is a time limit on the second public comment period of one minute per individual and three minutes per group for a total time limit of 15 minutes. We would ask in individuals to identify themselves by name and please provide us with your address and address your comments to the board as a whole, not to individual board members. Public comment period is open. Public comment period is open. All right, seeing no movement, I'll bring the second public comment period of the evening to a close. Next item on our agenda is adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn this meeting of October 9th, 2018? So moved. Have a motion, is there a second? Second. All in favor of adjournment, please respond with aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. We are adjourned.